Okay, some progress on the uh, Land of Things project. This building is the first one to be uh, wired up. I've been testing on my bench until just now. Um, look at some of the goodies here. There's uh, my solenoid valves for the cistern. Uh, water inlet rate counter, which I haven't yet hooked up. Uh, going in here into the basement. We see something. Bill always accuses me of making all my stuff too nice. I refute it thus. Uh, there's the Arduino with a bunch of sensors wired up to it. Uh, that battery provides peak current for this board, which drives the water valves, which are hooked up and working. This is a bulk power supply that runs both this water pump up here, which is a spot sprayer pump, and uh, all the rest of this crap, and that little 12 volt gel cell is also an uninterruptible power for the Raspberry Pi, which is upstairs. I'll uh, pause this and go up there. Okay, up here we have a Raspberry Pi uh, Model 2, which isn't strictly required, but does make things go a little faster. It's running wirelessly right now, because as you might be able to have seen outside, the network cable is currently dug up. I have this little camera on a gimbal servo sitting there, but I don't have the servo hooked up. Your regular keyboard and so on. But the whole point of this, of course, is that I don't have to run it from here. I can run it from any web browser on my LAN. Um, but we can also run it locally. Look at plots. This is over the last hour. I had my water tank full and I deliberately, we'll show this on Kazam maybe, uh, ran it down to the next step on the sensor just to see the sensor work. <laughs> I've got plenty of spare water. Um, and in fact, while we're waiting for that to happen, we can uh, go home, as it were. <coughs> go to the water control page. This is for the manual. Open the intake valve. Set the valves. And we will discover, I think, we just close this for memory savings. I think we're going to discover that the... Uh, Intake valve is now open when we go out here. Yes, there's a lot of junk in here. <laughs> this needs to be cleaned up because I'm going to live here now. You can see we're digging up the foundation for uh, an add-on to make it even nicer. And there was where the network cable used to uh, come through. Obviously, I didn't want to plow it. So if you go down here, Let's see if that worked. And the answer is yes, water is coming in. And it will overflow out of this guy um, and make this sensor. I'm actually using this brass fitting itself for the overflow sensor because why not? Um, and we're almost, you know, in five or six more gallons to go to get up to overflow. So let's run over to the other house and do something on uh, Kazam. This is what it looks like on this camera. It's going to look about the same on the Pi camera except it's shooting through a screen. So you'll see the screen. We're having a wild weather day in Floyd. You name it, we got it. Okay, assuming Kazam works, we're now showing a picture of the server over in that trailer. Um, this little camera poking out that window. Let's see what the camera is showing us. Hey, it's pointed at me! <laughs> no surprise, I pointed it that way on purpose. You can see the back end of my bolt out there. And yes, we're getting live video from that. Uh, we have a lot of settings we can set, but I'm going to do it right now. Um, we can look at the water control page. I, showed you on something else and it shows the water inlet valve open because we opened it from over there same same web page same cgi uh let's look at some plots and let's see if we can see um <laughs> they're taking a little longer over wireless we're still showing that we haven't got enough water in to actually hit the overflow which is 225 gallons um but we will. 
uh, we'll give it a, a few seconds. And meanwhile, we can actually see the transition. In fact, let's go for a long-term plot. Eh, go for one week first. While we're waiting, and we will be waiting for a while, the uh, Pi takes about 10 or 15 seconds to compute this, and apparently we're not getting blazing speed over wireless. We are now seeing a week's worth of temperatures and some goofing around here at the transition between moving it from my bench uh, downstairs in this building to outdoors. Uh, the water, which was initially full when I first hooked it up, and then I flushed the toilet a few times to get it off the overflow. And some temperatures. Now, what I was marking as flu temperature is now a thermocouple that's sitting in the basement over there where it's pretty cool. The CPU of the Pi is warmer because it's pretty warm in that room. I have a pilot light from a heater running all the time. So the Pi box has also got a little warmer, but also I've been beating the snot out of the Pi with database administration and whatnot. Um, so if we go back, it's actually not that completely unsmooth a transition. Let's look at all the data. I've got my testing database from for all time, so to speak. It's less than 30 days. And I use 30 days rather than a month because who wants to deal with February and all that other stuff, you know? I mean, if you're just looking at weather trends for deciding what to do in your garden, you don't really care. Uh, but obviously it's going to take a little longer to actually plot that much data because these are uh, one minute per sample. So we're finding out that some things are a little warmer over there and some things are a little colder and uh, no big surprise. Uh, whenever you see a really straight line, that means I probably erased some total garbage data out of the database. Uh, the green here is outdoor humidity. It's been very humid here. Uh, the water still hasn't shown uh, going up again yet. It is going in though, because we just uh, checked it with a video camera. And to get it sort of checking it more frequently, we can look at, ah, there we are. We have hit the overflow. Okay, so what we want to do now is go home, go to the water control, close all the valves, ba boom, go home. It may take up to a minute for that to actually uh, take effect, but in theory we've closed the valve. And uh, so we have our camera. We have our plots, we have water valve control. We don't yet have the uh, rate meters hooked up for the, uh, the water flow, uh, so we don't see it yet. We will on this plot, which right now only has this. Uh, but we've got, we're taking data, it's just always taking zero because they're not hooked up to count. I'm going to do that a little bit later on this afternoon, I hope. So uh, now when it's raining, uh, and I know I've got good water because I can sort of look out the window and look at my water collection tank. I can say open the valve. I know, I know how much is room in the cistern and I know when to close the valve or dump grubby dirty water out like stuff that's got bird poo and pollen and whatnot. Pollen is actually our, our enemy here. Um, the birds have plenty of trees. They don't really hang out on my roof. Um, and do it. But the full automation is waiting for another unit to be built for this building which will create its own database, which will know about the water collection system at this end and so on and so forth. And then a control program will be written by me that will look at both databases and decide what to do. So I won't have to do it manually. But doing it from the comfort here of my couch, it still beats the crap out of going out with an umbrella and unscrewing doors and twisting valves and waiting for things to happen at some very slow pace. As you saw, the water doesn't run in very fast. Um, and, you know, being in the rain and or cold while this is happening, uh, this is going to completely rock over doing that. It'll probably save me uh, a number of hours a week. So, uh, looking good so far. We're almost there for at least one of the buildings. And uh, guess what? I can steal almost all of the software for the other one. Other than the details of the database column names, it's pretty much the same stuff. Um, so, enjoy. And later on. We have the, uh, what do you call that? The uh, Internet of Things, except we're not on the Internet. Good luck trying to steal my data or set my house on fire. Later on, people.